my mind. So either one, that layery color, you always try to figure out if I'm making a, a statement with complementary color, I have to have white between each color to control its, its strength. Otherwise, the color underneath will mix and it will turn gray. Like you see paintings, like for example, I saw a lot of Monet, who I respect anybody that paints that long on anything. Yeah. <laughs> but his, much of his paintings died. They become absorbed because he kept throwing blues, violet, greens, blue, violet, green, blue, violet, green, and he was building them up over a period of time, and over time they become dead. There's dead spots in the painting. But a very interesting... Oh, it's, it's a dead spot. When you keep multiplying, just piling color, different colors on top of each other. So you need the white to get a clear color. You need the white to get a clear color. That comes right out of the study of, of the Renaissance, and they got the idea of layering color from the stained glass people. They were watching people put in stained glass, and they would put two colors together to get a third color. The painter said, we got to be able to do that. So they found a way in which to do that. Now, one of the great painters, that understood the craft and the, and the importance of white was Titian. Titian did two things that people forget. One, he would paint something and completely cover it with white and repaint it, knowing that as it aged, it would create a luminosity. 500 years later, the Kooning takes white, paints out things, Paints back over them, same result. So white was very important to controlling the inner light. As people forget, Titian was not painting a light source. The light was within the painting. And I know that because when he painted a nude in front of a window, and the window was full of light, that nude would have been in shadow, but she was in full light, which told me she was light to fit the design of the painting and the emotion of the painting. So those guys were, in a way, making and adjusting things to fit the eye and the feet to fit the mind. Different world. When we got work our way up to the, to the modern world, we got into two battles. One, which was very political, which said what we didn't need. And that pushed people creatively back about 100 years. Well, it said we don't need to compose, we don't have to worry about color, we don't have to worry about the light, we don't have to worry about composition, we don't have to worry about space or tension. In other words, by the time they got through, uh, we were house painters. So that's why Hoffman became so important to many of the painters, like Billy Cho and his generation, that taught us. Because he brought back the idea that, no, if you pay attention to these basic ideas, you can throw paint and it will be more interesting. But an idea without the craft and without understanding what color does, a waste of time. You might as well skull. You got a better chance. Painting has always been simply divided from what the rest of the world is doing because a painting is not contemporary. A painting has principles, just like building a house. And I remember that I took, took it from Vit, because Vit said, if he had an architect that built him a house and didn't know where the chest was, he wouldn't be he would be afraid to enter it because the roof would eventually be on him. Painting is built out of the same kind of foundations and movements. The freedom of the surface has more freedom when it understands where things are. The relationship of this movement has a lot to do 
with not only the vacillation of the color, but the organization that enters the brain. And these are simply craft formations that it's not art. It's a concept. The art comes from you when you utilize the information to your own business. Everyone in this room, as one guy used to tell me, is an encyclopedia of emotion. Everyone. We don't stand alone. We stand in the midst of ideas. And everyone in here has an idea that is different from the neighborhood. The only common denominator, and I keep pushing it, is the relationship of the whole when you're done. That's your game. Unfortunately, we're in a terrible time, so I can't do anything about that. You are the culture now, so you're in trouble. You're living in an age spot. A tough time. I enjoy it because nobody cares what I do, which means I can do whatever hell I want. So, now, we'll do a collage. I mean, why not? I had a frame that bothers me. I have a frame before you. So you can see what it actually looks like. 